you doing here? It's Monday, so it means some more autumn picking advice. In this one, we're gonna go through a lick as usual, but also cover a string skipping routine that will help you with your string skipping, obviously, but also introduce a concept that will really be helpful for your overall technique practice. And I would advise you to try it with the string skipping routine, but then go apply it to whatever else you're trying to work on at the moment. Before we get started today, go sign up for my newsletter. You have the link below. And as a bonus, you get 17 free lessons straight away, and then you get access to a lot of exclusive lessons that you won't find anywhere else, not even here on my YouTube channel. All right, here's the lick slow. We start on the fifth fret of the A string. This lick is based on the G Aeolian scale, which is another name for the natural minor scale. So we start with two five string sweeps. Uh, the first shape is this one. We start on the fifth fret and we go five, 10, eight, seven, eight, six, 10. Picking is down, hammer, down, 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 up, pull off, go back the same way, up stroke, down, down, down. So that's the first part. And we shift up here to the 15th fret with the pinky. And we go down 15, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, 10. Picking is upstroke, pull off, up, 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 down. And then from here we have an ultimate picking run, but we play the two arpeggios back to back. Once we get to the bottom of this arpeggio, start an alternate picked run, which is the same run that Paul Gilbert played in his first instructional video in Tennis Rock, but he started here. And so on. And what this is, is a variation of the classic three note per string picking run. I think a lot of ultimate pickers is probably the, one of the first things they could pick fast. I know that was the case for me, which is basically if we take the C major scale here, then you just repeat, you go up six notes, all alternate picked, and then you restart on the next string group. So we go up eight, 10, 12, eight, 10, 12, and then you restart here and you play the same thing. We start here. That's a very classic fast picking 80s run, but it's used all over the place. Uh, and you can do that descending, of course, as well. So it's pretty easy to pick. Back to the actual lick, though. Uh, we do the same thing in terms of the picking but we move up one position each time we restart on the string group. So one thing you can look out for is that the fifth note, one, two, three, four, five, is the one we're gonna start at in the next, on the next string group. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, start on five, one, two, three, four, five, six, start on five, one, two, three, four, five, six, start on five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we move up another fret, or another uh, two frets, to the ending note here, be the fifth of the key. Uh, so again, this is all confusing to you. I would highly suggest that you sign up for my YouTube lessons subscription. We get all the tabs for everything I post here. So that's a good shout if you're interested in this stuff. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna go through a string skipping routine. And we're going to apply all the practice tools we've talked about so far. And basically, you can see how I would suggest that you use them. And this is only one way of doing it. There's several different ways of using these practice tools. You can you know, pick any one that you like the most and use that. But the more variety you get into your practice, the easier it will be for you to focus and also see whatever you're practicing from different angles and it will help you correct certain things that might be hard to find if you just do it one way only. 
So the practice routine is divided into three fingers at a time and the three possible fingerings we have here is one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four. And the pattern we're gonna apply is this one where we're gonna go from the E string to the D string, that's a string skip, back to the A string, G string, D, B, G, E. Once we're done with that, move it up a half step and then reverse the order of the fingers. So one, two, three becomes three, two, one and the string is going to remain in the same type of order. So we're going to have E, G, B, D, G, A, D, E, and then we're back where we started. How we practice this then? Well, we're going to go through a list of different practice variations. The first one is going to be transition time. Second one is going to be a series of rhythmic variations. And then finally, the, the last section will be accents. I'm not going to exhaust all the possibilities here, but that's not the point. The point is to have quite a few things on your list when you play through anything that you're practicing to keep it fresh and also to find those different angles I talked about earlier. So you can basically see it as you, you give yourself a problem with each of these variations, you play it through and the goal is to at least make it through without a mistake. And I'm sure you're going to make mistakes the first few times you do it, but that's fine. But that's where you need to find a way to fix it. And that's usually quite an intuitive process. So just try to figure out what you're doing wrong. And usually it's just a matter of playing it again and letting your brain get a handle on what you're actually trying to do. So I'm going to show these variations uh, with the first fingering pattern here. But again, remember that you should repeat the same thing again, but with one, two, four on each string, one, three, four, and then finally two, three, four. And I would also suggest you repeat everything again, five, four frets up. So if you start here on the fifth fret, you start on the ninth fret, and you do it all again, starting with an upstroke and everything. All right, so variation one is transition time, and transition time simply means that you play quite slowly, meaning not many notes per minute, but you try to go as fast as possible between each note. So it would sound like this with one, two, three. If that went well, you move on to the next variation, which will be dotted rhythms. And that's basically gonna be long, short, or short, long. So long, short will sound like this. Then if that went well, we reverse that. So we get short, long instead. variation is going to be long short short so it's the same kind of idea just extend it with one extra note uh, so that sounds like this that works you turn that around so you get short short long Keep in mind when doing these daughter rhythms that you want a big contrast. And what I mean by that is that the long note can be really long. And then the fast note is as fast as you can make it without making any mistakes. All right, so you don't want this sort of shallow version, which would be... That won't help you much. So again... And that goes for, for the double fast notes as well. Next thing on the list that I forgot to mention in the intro to this is planting. And that's basically where you prepare the pick on the string each time. So you go, it will sound like this. Then I do the same thing again, but now I'm gonna do all downstrokes. Mm -hmm. 
and then once more all upstrokes. And the reasoning behind doing all downstrokes and all upstrokes is that when you do consecutive downstrokes, you still need to get that upstroke, right? Since to return back without hitting the string, you need to use an upstroke to get there. And the same thing when you do all upstrokes, you need to do, get a downstroke to get it back. So it will help your alternate picking a lot. And especially when you combine it with this planting technique. All right, so the last section will be a series of accents. The first one is where you divide this thing into basically eighth notes. You would count one and two and three and one and two and three and and the first variation we're going to accent all the numbers so, so if you start with a downstroke it's going to be downstrokes right so you're going to go one and two and three and one and two and three and throughout the whole thing and then you do the same thing again but now you're going to accent all the ands so in this case it's going to be upstroke so you go one and two and three and one and two and three and and so on throughout the whole thing. The benefit of using accents here is not to get the accented effect. So we're not looking for a really big dynamics difference here. It's more about getting what I call the spotlight effect. And what that is, is that you, you will go through this systematically and you'll be forced to really listen more intently to all the notes you're playing. Because sometimes it can be really easy to miss a note if you just keep doing this. You might not pay as much attention on the notes that don't fall on the beat because they're naturally unaccented. But going through this with accents will really help you synchronize your hands. And also if you would be working on something with sweep picking or legato, you can find other different things that might hold your technique back. So by going through it with the accents, you ensure that you sort of lift and look under the rug uh, on your technique. So the last part will be accenting all the different subdivisions. And in this case, we're gonna use a subdivision of six notes per beat. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you want to make sure that your foot is tapping on one the whole time. And since we're gonna have to play at a very slow tempo here, a metronome won't really help you, but if you just keep counting out loud while you do this, that will give you the best results, I believe. So if you do that, just make sure that your foot is always tapping on one. So you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you'll find that you kind of need to do this mechanically because it's not fast enough to actually get some sort of groove going because at below a certain tempo, your foot kind of doesn't go like this automatically. So you kind of have to do it manually, if that makes sense. But if you do that, you'll get a feel for the, that big subdivision anyway. So this also means that you have full control of what you're doing. And this is really helpful actually, whenever you're trying to learn a tricky rhythm with, because you can just count it out and play it and make sure that your foot falls on the beat the whole time, which would mean the, the one in whatever subdivision you're using. So saying all that, you want to go through everything, count it out loud and just accent the one first. You're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, throughout the whole thing. And then that works, you go to two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you go on like that until you've done three, four, five and six as well. So once you've done that, you're done with the first fingering. Then you would repeat the same thing again using one, two, four. So you start with transition time, you go into the rhythmic variations, the planting, the accents, and then you move on to one, three, four, same thing, two, three, four, same thing. And if you've done that and you still have time to practice, I would really suggest that you move it up to another position and then do the same thing again, but start with an upstroke on everything, meaning starting an upstroke on anything that's going to be played with alternate picking. Uh, doing all downstrokes and all upstrokes will be the same in this sort of variation, but the rest will start on, on upstrokes. You just turn everything around. Basically it means you're going to get more inside picking on the skipping here. And also all the accents will be turned around. 
So I think that's a really important thing for a strong alternate picking technique. So you're not reliant upon always getting the downstrokes on the downbeat necessarily because when you're improvising sometimes that's not going to be the case and if you only practice it that way you're going to run into all kinds of problems. I've listed all these variations in the tab as well so if you feel it's hard to sort of know what I mean by everything and you want a visual representation of that you can just go check out the tabs. You have the links below to sign up for that. As usual please like and subscribe and also if you have any questions or comments just post them below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, good luck with this stuff and see you next time.